Hello, hello, how is everyone? When we do something good, when we win the top prize, when we always win, people, parents, behave more nicely with us. The same is cool if you are a good student. Teachers treat you differently and better. When we receive all these praises and gifts, we, in our minds, only see that the good things are happening when we are best or successful. Without intending, we are teaching children to think like this. How? Teach your child poems, songs, numbers, alphabet at the age of three. And when we have guests, what are we doing? Come on, say that poem to your aunt. Come on, show that uh, uh, dance to your granny. And of course, the child will do it. And when he finishes, what happens? Everyone will applaud him. Everyone will congratulate the child. Say, what a smart child. And maybe ask him to do it again and again. So what happens if we repeat this? The child creates an idea, a belief, because I'm the best, everyone accepts, accepts me. It will give me attention. Everyone likes me. And if the child is not taught to lose, to not receive compliments always for his performance, then he will always expect to the approval of others and will be very disappointed when he will not receive praise or when people will not pay too much attention. The child must be taught that he will not always receive only good feedback and praise from everyone, friends, colleagues, uh, even family, and later in life from his partner. How many times do we congratulate someone telling us the truth in front of us, a friend? How many times do we thank, for, thank them for being honest with us? Very few people appreciate this. If what is said to them is not to praise them, then they will say things like, how can he say this to me? He didn't realize that this upsets me. Upsets me. He, that person doesn't care about me. This is what we do with kids. How often do we congratulate them when they have the courage to say, I don't like this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to go with you because it's boring. How many times do we congratulate them for their courage? How many times do we congratulate the child because he tried to do something even if he did not, did not win? If the kid the child tells us today, I took a D in maths. How we will react? We raise our voice asking why? Why did not you learn? The child might say, I don't want to learn. You might say, it's not about wanting to learn. It is necessary to study, even if you don't like it. So the discussion can continue. If the child had the courage to tell you the truth, don't argue with him, appreciate courage. And then say nicely that not doing your homework or not um, studying is not a very good decision. Do not fight with him. If we do that, then what the child will think? Oh, to tell the truth is not good. So congratulate him on having the courage to tell you the truth that he trusted you. Because if we don't see these things, then the child will avoid the conflict and next time will tell you lies. So then a pattern of dishonesty will begin. 
we should encourage the child to tell the truth, to be honest. Because to be honest, it is more important than a little mistake or a bad decision. Homework it is important, school it is important, right? We all know this. Why? Because I want the child to learn well, I want him to go to school if it's possible to be the first in the class, to be able to go to college, to get a good job, a good salary, agree? But after doing all this, after what he achieved all this in his life, he got that job, he has money. We are happy, right? But if you do not, if you do not let child to say his thoughts when he's small, how he will have the courage when he will have to face uh, his boss in a difficult situation? How he will have the courage to ask for his salary to increase because he he knows that he he's doing more work than others. He knows that he deserves to be uh, better paid. So we need to teach children to have courage to fight for their rights. Do you have the courage to be really honest to a person to say your true opinion or you are avoiding you have to think twice before telling the truth have you ever said a lie to your boss something like I can't come to work today because I'm ill when the real reason was something different we do this because we feel that we need to justify that we have to have a good reason or we will be fired the only problem is that every time when we do things like this, we lose our trust in ourselves. We lose value, we feel disappointed in ourselves. We are also stressed when you have to say a lie, when you always have to think for a reason uh, to say to your boss when you are not able to go to work. We lose the courage to have a different opinion, a different idea. We lose our confidence in us. And of course, we will always stay in our comfort zone. Later, you might feel just that you are not happy with your life. But you don't know why. You don't know what you really want. You don't know what really makes you happy. How many people do not know their passion? do not know what they can do very well, do not know their gifts, their uniqueness. But moreover, when we feel unhappy, it is because we do not listen to our minds. Our minds tell us something, but we continue to do what we did, what we used to do. We do not have a relationship with the mind. We all know that the mind is the most powerful tool for create, uh, creating happiness, confidence, and success in life. Another issue will be if we don't listen our mind, if we don't put the mind to work, eventually we will not have any more ideas because we do not stimulate the brain. And then when we met someone with lots of ideas and enthusiasm, we are asking, how does he have so many ideas? Where these ideas are coming from? Why, why I did not think about it? Doing this, that, doing all those things that we like, what we want, not what others want, means that there is less chances for us to suffer, to get in depression, to take pills, to get stressed, to get sick. We all know that stress does not help health. To have strong children, we need to be strong parents. So let respect ourselves first and then respect others. Let's be honest with ourselves and then we can be honest with others. The parental relationship, even in adolescence, will be a good one when the child knows that he doesn't have to hide, he doesn't have to lie, 
he, when he knows that he's allowed to say his truth, to say his opinion, and that he can, that he can speak freely with us. Of course, we will not always be perfect, because first of all, we have to work on our minds first. But now, we have a lot of information, such a, a, a lot of information, so much um, depends on the, what we choose for our lives and our relationship and our career, our uh, dreams. We do not have to compare ourselves with others. We do not have to compare our children with others. We are different. We have different personalities, we have different pleasures, we have different fears, different problems, but we live in the same world. But every day is our day. We decide how to spend it. If to do if you, you choose if you want to do those things that doesn't make you happy, or to do something that makes you happy. It doesn't matter even if it's only for two or three hours a day. We all have the same possibilities. We do not have to worry what people will say because people are coming and going in our lives. We can give our children direction. We can give our children guide. We can tell them what we think, what we should uh, be good for them but we cannot force them to do what we told them to do. We cannot get upset because they didn't did what we said them to them to go to college for, college, for example. We do not have to dream, hopefully my child will do what I want. If we are focused on that, it is like an obsession that we cannot see other opportunities for our child. We will not be able to know our child better, what he likes, what he wants, what makes him happy. We won't be able to see how can we support him in what he wants to do. I know it is hard because we parents believe that um, to be happy in life, the child must be a doctor, an engineer, an architect, this doesn't mean that it will bring happiness. We must let children learn to listen to their instinct, instinct, to have the courage to do what they want, to tell their opinions, to get to know themselves. Because when they do that, they will not seek for answers from other people, asking others, what do you think I should do? How should I do it? Because if they do this and they listen to those people, then they will live those lives, people, those lives dream, those people dreams. If they will know to get themselves better, if they know what's their strengths, what, what are their weaknesses, then they will be less stressed, they will worry less, they will deal better with obstacles, problems, they will accept mistakes then they will not behave as a victim in life. They will know that they are responsible for their decision, for their thoughts, for their emotions. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please tell me your opinions, leave comments if you like it, if you have uh, any other ideas. And if you like this video, please share. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.